ever since some guy in the Librarian Congress decided not to renew a provision in the Digital Millennium Copyright Act in which the Philippines is also following that makes it illegal to unlock your phone without the carrier's permission, there's been a lot of interest in the issue. But when it comes to unlocked phones, there's been a lot of confusion. A lot of people have been looking for ways to unlock their phones. In fact, websites that sell unlock codes say that sales are up to 71% as of 2013. But some people still ask, what exactly does device locking do and how do we unlock them? Well, aside from legal issues, there are technical issues as well. First, let's talk about carrier locks. Carrier locks come with just about any cell phone that you buy from a wireless operator even if it's not directly bought from the manufacturer and it's for a specific carrier, then most likely it has carrier lock on it, regardless of whether you buy the phone on a government loan or at full price. Generally, the only devices that don't have carrier locks are the ones that specifically say they are unlocked, such as the Google Android Nexus brand, unlocked versions of the iPhone, and some developer edition devices. If you want an unlocked phone, you should research in advance whether the phone is available as unlocked and where you can get it. Now what exactly is a phone lock? The lock is simply a software code that's put on the device by the manufacturer as per the requirement of the carrier that sells it. The lock is meant to ensure that the phone can't be used on another operator's network until a different software code is entered to unlock the device. This is an issue for devices that operate on GSM networks. This is a wireless standard that is used by Globe and by most operators around the world. The 3G technology HSPA and HSPA Plus are based on GSM which means carrier offering them also operates via GSM. All GSM devices are designed so that service is provisioned using a SIM card. With an unlocked device, a GSM smartphone can be issued with a new SIM from another carrier without notifying them. This is not the case for CDMA networks. CDMA network is used by Verizon Wireless and Sprint in the US. This standard is not as widely used as GSM. CDMA devices don't have SIM cards, so if you want to take your CDMA devices to another CDMA network, then you have to inform the carrier to approve such action. EVDO is the 3G technology used on CDMA networks. In general, CDMA carriers don't allow their phones to be used by another network. But unlocked GSM phones from Globe and Smart Communication will work on each other's network, which makes the use of GSM more flexible than CDMA. But things are getting a bit more complicated. Now there's a new network technology called LTE, which like GSM also uses a SIM card. But unlike GSM, not all LTE services operate over the same radio frequency. For instance, to deliver LTE services, Globe and Smartcoms use different pieces of spectrum that have different band plans. This means that devices built for Globe won't operate on Smart's LTE network and vice versa. Though this issue will soon change as chip manufacturers have started to include multiple radios on their semiconductors. What's more, wireless operators will also soon be incorporating other pieces of spectrum in their LTE networks which will overlap with their competitor. In summary, phone locks are not really relevant when you're talking about 2G and 3G devices that operates on CDMA and EVDO networks. But phone locks are very important on devices that operates on GSM or HSPA or HSPA Plus networks. Almost all GSM devices come pre-locked to a specific carrier. Certain phones are sold unlocked and if you have a phone that is locked, you can get it unlocked from your wireless carrier. So that's it for this video. If you like it, click like, subscribe, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Also, check out our website at techswitchmedia.com for more tech-related news and updates. Until the next video, this is Renz, your tech guide. Adios.